welcome back to TC911 Beyond the Call. This is your host, Abby Dudek, and this is episode nine. And today I am talking with 911 supervisor from Irving Police Department, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. How Hello. are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to have a chat with me. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're here at Irving. How long have you been with the city of Irving? Since May of 2009, so just over 14 years. Okay, great. And how long have you been a a supervisor? I have only been a supervisor for eight months, nine months, something like that. Fresh out the box. Nice. Yes, (laughs) fresh in my first year. So Well, that's excellent. Still learning my ropes. Now... You know, we have talked to other uh, your other supervisor manager from here from Irving, and so your process was and correct me if I'm wrong that you were you started as a dispatcher or call taker and then went to dispatcher and then you went to CTO. And, correct. Right, and then uh, were they didn't have another supervisor position? That's, it's a. A senior dispatcher. A senior dispatcher. That's almost like a floor lead, essentially. Okay. And then the supervisor position. Oh, okay. Great. Did you, now when you started in 2009, was this the career that you thought that you would be in for 15 years? Or did you say, hey, you know what, I think I'll do this for a little bit, but then I'm going to go, I don't know, be a a dancer or a baker or an astronaut or whatever? (laughs) You know, I had no um, long-term plan. I just really wanted to get out of waiting tables, which is what I was doing. I feel you. And actually waiting tables helped me in this role because of the multitasking and the people pleasing and the, you know, taking care of taking care of others. So it kind of all of my skill set there moved into this role as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I waited tables also. And I now, you know, see if you agree with this. I think that everyone at least one time in their life should wait tables or work in food service. Yes, absolutely. You learn so much about the population, about people, about relationships. and You start to learn how to read people, yes, too. absolutely. I, I really started to learn to read people when I waited tables. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, I waited ta- at different restaurants, mostly big chains. Me, too. <laughs> like yeah. the OG. Yeah. Were you uh, at the, was, Olive, was, the Olive Garden? No, I was Red Lobster, though. Red was, Lobster? Okay, so you're still in the <laughs> right Darden, across the road, Darden yeah. family. Exactly. Well, they're no longer part of Darden anymore. But, um, yeah, I was, at, I was at Olive Garden. I, You know what? I love that everyone loves the free breadsticks and salad, <laughs> but I literally have PTSD from it now because people constantly wanted refills. Like, I'd put the bowl on the table, and they'd right. be like, I want another one. And I'm like, why don't you finish this one, pal, before you... I mean, it's, it's I not I still going have anywhere. dreams about being in the weeds. Oh, it, my gosh. It'll never escape me. I dream it's, about that more than I dream about anything isn't that, here isn't at that work. horrible? Isn't that horrible? <laughs> red lobster. I haven't eaten red lobster in probably 20-some years. Uh, uh, it's been about 14 and a half since it, I that, ate there it. There you yeah. go. That makes, that makes sense. Um, and then their cheddar biscuits were always the the fave yes. of it. But so you that's know. my that's my salad and breadsticks. The cheddar version. biscuits. Were, yes. Oh it's boy. Yeah, that's never that's, ending. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> such stuff. Yeah. I just I have to say, well, you know, first off, thanks for serving the food industry. Yeah. Well, you, know. you too. Oh yeah, you know. And, and you know what? I'm a little. Um, sometimes I'm a little sad because every once in a while I was like, I wish I had enough time. I would at least go wait tables for like a, one day out of the week. But unfortunately, my schedule does not allow that. And now when age starts creeping up on, you're like, nope, I need to sit down. I can't do that. I, I don't right. know. I need to rest. So, yeah, good old waiting table. So if you uh, if you're listening and you have maybe maybe some time and you're like, you know what? I might want to try that. There's mm-hmm. no shame in that. It's great. And actually, you can make some pretty good money depending on where you work. Yeah, too. Sure so can. That's OK. So clearly you decided I need to leave the RL and yes. I need to get out of here. These yes. lobsters need to go away. <laughs> yes. And so did you apply for other things or just did, were you like, hey, 911, what's this? So I actually applied with the city um, for jail records and dispatch and just kind of this is where I landed. Awesome. So. Well, it's a benefit to you, and it's For a benefit sure. to them because they got you. So they they saved you from lobsters. It was great. That's so true. So that's wonderful. Was it? Um, have you had any like public safety 
experiences prior to that? Uh, you know, like if your family's in it or did you? No. So you were like, fresh new page, let's write this story. Yep. And I've never even called the police before. Okay. Before I started working here. Now, have you ever called the police now since you've worked here? <laughs> uh, I've only called to make sure... Um, like when I'm coming in and I see an accident that's oh, not you, our jurisdiction. Okay, you call. Like, oh. If we have calls on this, that's not ours. Call Fort Worth <laughs> okay. or something like that. Okay, so you're actually calling for heads up yeah. and stuff like that, but yeah. not actual calls. I have to say the first time I called 911 was when I started at the district. Oh, okay. Like I've never, I don't think I've ever called 911 prior to that. So yeah, good fun. It's interesting how that works out. I don't mm. like calling because I'm no. like, oh, I don't want to, do I need to give my name because no, I don't want to. Anonymous, anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. Oh, this is anonymous, Abby. Oops, I mean anonymous. Because <laughs> I'm so used to calling you guys right. on the on a different line and then saying, hey, it's Abby. And then I'm like, no, I can't do that on 911. So, well, that's, I, I love the, tr- the the plan that you had. You're kind of like, you know, I need to go do something else. I need, And you went straight for a city job, which was, it's amazing because benefits and everything right. are fantastic. Now, how did you see your career path here? Did you? You, you know, kind of think like, you know what, I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, or were you like, I'll stay here for a little bit and then see what happens? I was kind of open to whatever at the time. Uh, I had no um, five year plan, I had no 10 year plan, I definitely had no retirement plan. Um, I was just kind of, my focus was to get out of the cash industry, you know, the waiting tables, living off of living day to day. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I had to learn how to budget because I'd never in my whole life had a paycheck before because I'd always. Oh, all the tips and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then I applied at the positions here that didn't require a college degree because I don't have one. So I just basically looked on that and here I am. Yeah. And during my interviews, they were like, you know, what are what are your goals? And I was like, I have no idea. You know, to I was not, honest. I to mean, not serve cheddar biscuits right, anymore. Right, exactly. To no get offense, me out of... No offense, Red Lobster. Right. But. They paid my bills for many years and I'm appreciative, but... Appreciate for the jobs we right. had in the past, but here we are, right. folks. Exactly. <laughs> had, to, had to get out of it. What was, like, since you came in, you know, fresh and stuff like that, did, what was some of the calls that you were like, whoa, you know, because I know in training they go over, you know, when you're in training, you go over all these calls and it's, you always go for the worst case scenario, but then you're always, your first call is on your own or the first couple weeks, you get something that was not covered or was not like, it's just out of the. For sure. My, um very first call that I had was probably and this time frame could be wrong but my memory is maybe like the first two weeks of being cut loose um, from just the phones or the call taking position and you know it was of course a, a murder being called in oh, by geez. a child so it was like a child caller and violent situation in a public place and it was so like there's no preparing for that you no. can talk about it absolutely but until it happens you're like oh my gosh yeah and that's why but, we always say it it really takes um it does take a special person to do this job yes. because and i try to tell a lot of citizens when i see them when they're interested in the position mm-hmm. they're like well what kind of calls is it i'm like everything because you're right. the lifeline you're right. you're it and so i always tell people hey you know watch the news you know get online and read the, the read the news or do whatever and then imagine that that call had to come in you know set had right. to have been reported in some way to For 911 sure. so somebody has to get that call so mm-hmm. it's almost like a lottery absolutely you know, what and you're you gonna never get. know what you're going to get could be on a non-emergency line that's true too and you're really grasping for information the the caller could have all of the information that you need or they could have zero information mm-hmm. and you have to try to scrounge it up as best you can so it you never know what you're going to get on the other end of that line oh absolutely and i'm sure you've probably seen a big difference in your skill setting like you're from when you when you oh, started yeah. till now and stuff you could probably do it in your sleep now right for sure <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> and uh and you know being a supervisor now I'm not on the radio as much um and I do miss that it's it's fun and it's entertaining and skills sharp mm-hmm. um being out there it definitely 
it, it can it can it can wear on you a little bit yes. sometimes. It's, yeah. it is. It, it takes its toll. Yeah, because you guys have a, you know nine one one dispatchers and you know and that includes call takers and radio dispatchers and everything. That takes you have a lot on your plate. You have so much responsibility, so much liability, and you all do such a great job because it's it's one of those things that once you're in it, you just develop this love for it right and you're almost like addicted to it right and it's kind of we talked about it before like when something may start to seem like it's happening like oh it might happen and then it doesn't oh, happen and mine, everybody's like mine. and yeah. everybody's like oh <laughs> it was nothing you know right. not that not that you know anybody in the in the industry wishes harm to others or anything for sure it's it's just kind of that adrenaline yes movement from it and everything so it can be it can be a little you know, mentally mind bending at times and yes. everything and types of calls. Cause you'll take one call and it'll be, Oh, my neighbor think I stole my dog or my neighbor cut my half the tree down right. or something, which are non emergencies. So, you know, call the non emergency line. Um, and then the next one, the nine one call could be, you know, my spouse of 30 years isn't breathing next to me, you know, and then you have all these different emotions, but I have heard several calls that, you, you know, Dispatchers have such a great way of handling that. You know, they're just amazing. Y'all are just amazing people. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We do our best. Yeah, absolutely. So what, uh, you know, for someone who uh, is possibly listening to this and wanting to start a career, uh, everything, what are some what are some things that you've learned along the way that if you could told if you could have told yourself in the beginning or in the hiring process or in the process of, I think I'm going to do this. What are some of the things that you may, you know, tell them or spread some advice or some helpful tips? Well, I think, um, you know, people applying now are obviously younger than younger than I am at this point, but they have the positive side of things of growing up with computers a whole lot more than I did. Oh, technology, so yeah. They're in technology inclined right off the bat to where that was more of a learned feature for me. So, you know, having that advantage is is really amazing. And do you think the multitasking has with computers and technology is yes. expanded? Because, you know, they have to take the critical test, which is, yes. you know, you have to listen. You have a headphone. I have phones you have to listen. You have two different radio traffics, phone traffic. And then you have a computer in front of you telling you to do stuff, too. Mm-hmm. So do you think that that's a lot better with um, those skills are a lot better with the generations that have grown up with cell phones and yes. everything? Absolutely. It really you can tell a difference. And, you know, like if I were to take that right now. I don't know how I would do. Well, I mean, I know how I would do now being in this field. But, you know, if I were coming in with no computer experience, I would be a little bit intimidated. Oh, sure. Easily. I can, I can definitely yeah. see how someone can be intimidated mm-hmm. by that. So, But it's, it's, it's not to, you know, it's not to, you know, discourage anybody sure. from applying. It's yeah. just, that's the job. It's very that's fast. Job. It's yeah. fast paced. Mm-hmm. It can be very sudden and... Mm-hmm. Um, we all work as a team very, very quickly. Uh, we can go from all being independent, working at our own desks to, you know, this is an entire room assist situation to mm. where one person takes over, like, I guess more the less important things. Like the lower priority. The lower priority, yeah, lower, lower right? priority calls. Like calling for a tow truck or, yeah. you know, those kind of things. But then somebody else will be in charge of, like, calling other cities to let them know a situation is heading their way or somebody else is sending out like a teletype for the region. So we all work as a team and figure out our roles pretty quick and they, and they change intermittently. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's great. You know, the camaraderie of, of, of helping because I've seen centers just come together when there's major incidences and yes. uh, in other situations where it's like, oh, everyone needs to come together. You know, right now, you know, Texas in a, is in a really dry spot for in a really critical spot right now for possible fires and Mm, and there's fires going all over and you know a lot of three alarm fires and higher that are going on you know we just had the devastation at the the um the cadillac uh, in bar in, Fort, in downtown yeah. fort worth mm-hmm. in the stockyards and that takes so much work so you know when you see stuff like that you know as you're as you're marinating in the career of 911 that's there's dispatchers teaming together to get, help the fire dispatcher 
do what they need to do. Call, because you have to call everyone. You have to call the electric company. You have to call the gas company. You have to call all that stuff to shut everything off. You have to, you know, make sure that you're tracking everybody, checking on everybody, listen to the fire guys on their radios, which is never easy when they have all of that stuff on there. Right, with their gear. Yeah, with all their gear on and, and whatnot. And it's just a really dangerous time right now for fires. And so, but again, there are dispatchers behind there that are working together. Uh, now you guys transfer your fire calls, but you still send police mm-hmm. for support, for traffic help and, and everything. So it's right. it's a huge effort. There's so much that goes on. To, and then the emergencies don't stop. Correct. It just keeps on, keeps on, yeah. keeping on. Just because there's you one know? major incident, unfortunately, right. people are like, oh, you know what? Let's hold off because they <laughs> right. have this going on. Right. And I feel really bad for that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen no. like that at all. No, absolutely not. So that's, I, I really, again, I, I, I can't commend this 9-1 industry enough on, on what everyone does. Um, what are some of the, you know, now that you're a supervisor, uh, what are some of the ways how you like to coach and mentor your 911 dispatchers who are on your shift or how would that, you know, under you or however you want to say that? I think for the majority of my time here, you know, I have a pretty even temperament no matter what, you know, mood I'm in. I try to stay on a stand even even stay ish, neutral yeah even be, Swiss- feel, be switzerland know? yes i yes. try it doesn't always work but i try <laughs> it's okay we all you have know? bad days we all <laughs> right. we're all human you right know? but um i think just showing up for your people says a lot to them and for them um following through with simple things like emails and you know if stuff is broken getting it fixed or you know it's the it's the little things that add up over time that I think make people want to work for you or with you or work on your shift. I 100% agree with that. And 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 what I've noticed too is you're you're very into and I say this because you've you volunteered with with things that I have put out mm-hmm. in the district and, and and very responsive of like different uh, things I give the dispatchers an opportunity to help in the community right. and you came out for the cycle nation mm-hmm. and and rode like a champ yep. and for American Heart Association mm-hmm. which was great and you know I think that that also you know, when your when your staff sees that, or when your teammates see that and stuff, and like, hey, that's our supervisor. They went out and did that. That might encourage them to be like, okay, I, I may want to partake in some of the stuff that goes out. I may want to do that. Whether, whatever, however, they can help. If it's just donating online or actually coming out and doing that. Right. So, I think it's great that you set good examples. Well, thank of you. Leadership, because I think it's important for if there's something going on that leadership, you know, right. should try to if they can. I know it's super busy too, and people have to coverage and stuff. Right. But if you're able to, you took. The, you, I mean, you made it happen because you were I like, tried. you were I like, mean. I'm rearranging things. <laughs> I'm going to be there. And I believe you're, wa- are you walking with me for the American Heart Association? So I was denied that day off. Uh, but I'd it's say call in my sick. calendar. I would say call in sick, but this is a, this, this, this is going to be public. So don't yeah. call in. Oh God, I hope no. you're really not sick that day. Cause then they're going to know it's fine. Um, <laughs> No, I did. It's in my calendar. So if if things open up things or switch happen. around, then yeah. I'll let you know. But well, I sure appreciate that. I no always problem. wonder. I'm always like, put that. I'm like, I wonder if Michelle's gonna jump on that because <laughs> she's try. she's my go to person here on on yeah. doing that. And 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 um, you know, uh, Kendall also right. came out and helped out with the decorations and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we do have a few dispatchers out that are going to be walking for the American Heart Association yeah. now. And this is later. I mean, this podcast is later. The, right. the American Heart Association walk was September 23rd in Tarrant County. So, uh, so again, you know, I guess we're, it's kind of hard to talk about the podcast and then it's in a, in a future <laughs> tense, but right. then we're talking about past tense in right. a future tense. You know what? Y'all get it. it, it, it it's listeners fine. It's part understand. Of multitasking. Yeah. So it's part of multi. <laughs> My skills aren't as sharp as they used to be because I don't dispatch anymore, yeah. but <laughs> they're somewhat there yeah. in a different way. So what, what do you foresee uh, in the future as in how uh, you supervise or do you have any, are you able to set projects up or different, um, I don't know, group trainings or different things to get the dispatchers more involved in it more an internal way here at Irving or, you know, cause you're pretty, you're very active and I know we always try to focus on mental and physical health and internal health mm-hmm. for the dispatchers and everything. Uh, what are some goals that maybe you've set for yourself now that you're in this position? Well, in the works, I, um, I, 
it is in the works for me to become a yoga instructor for I knew uh, it. <laughs> yoga for um, first responders. Okay. So we do that already at our wellness unit. Yeah, Kendall and, had shared with us that you guys, I did not yeah. know you guys did yoga. I thought so, that was so cool. Yeah. I'm going to stop by and do yoga you wanna, with you. You want to come with me? You can come yeah, today. I'll come do some I'll yoga. You know. I, got, I got a mat. I'll come. I, you want me to wear the we Sally costume? The mats. You want me to come to wear the Sally costume? <laughs> no, you'll we'll do sweat. Some, we'll do some Sally yoga. Uh, we usually do it at the uh, various fire stations because okay. they're they have the can, space yeah the space and the you well, know sally takes a lot of space up so i, I won't wear her plus i'll probably end up breaking my it's, arm and or it's my August neck and it's outside yeah you know what i had to wear that thing for the back to school roundup which i love that organization i love that event but oh man i, bet I was, it was sweating so bad <laughs> and i wanted to dance because they were playing all that they put they put on taylor swift and i heart taylor swift and sally loves taylor swift and i just had to show on my stellar dance moves it was for the kids it's for the family so i'm a sucker i always try to like bring smiles mm -hmm. but i'm in that thing dying <laughs> and i'm not jealous i'm like my, my moves look great but man what a way to go <laughs> <laughs> It'd be oh, an man. interesting, interesting ob obit. Mm -hmm. You know, passed away unfortunately in the yeah. cell phone I'm costume. not. I'm not jealous of you in that costume in August. <laughs> nah, it's all sure. right. It's all right. I think if you're, my heart was there. I made right. it through, and I chugged a lot of water after that. Mm -hmm. So, but um, anyway, yeah, no cell phone, no cell phone Sally costume. But Abby, myself, you know, me, right. I can come. Right, and it'll be great. So that's yeah. great. So you're heading that up, and. So it was supposed to happen already, and then the company um, had to reschedule, oh, so okay. they've redone it for December, and I just have to wait and see if I'm approved for that, and if not, then the next one's in April. Okay. So it's I got a couple on the back burner, and then, because yeah. um, I'm pretty heavily involved in peer support mm -hmm. also, and the been with our wellness unit since 2016 when they first launched, so... Um, I try to stay pretty involved with that as well. Uh, and that crosses over to right. with police, fire, as well as spouses on both sides. Oh, nice. And family. And we do uh, outings and all, all the stuff. It's all available. Oh, that's amazing. So, all right. So you got, not only do you have your supervisor job, but now yeah. you do your extracurricular activities. And it sounds like what you're doing is helping the mental health and we physical try. health and welfare of your of your coworkers and their spouses. Yep. Now, is your yoga class open to the spouses too? Like if not they wanted yet, to come? Because, okay. Because um, we just don't have the space. I think once oh, sure. there's a facility um, big enough that we acquire, I think it probably will be, but right now it's just employees. Well, oh, gotcha. Because we only have Abby. one instructor at this time. Oh, so okay. She, I get it. And she's a full time counselor. So oh, she's on, busy. Yeah. So she's she's a busy okay. busy body. I'll wait. So. I'll wait for you. I won't take up space. Oh no, so. you can take up space. It's well, I fine. don't want to. If someone else wants to do it, I don't want it. But I, you know, you said you're going to go in there and start instructing. So you're going to yeah. have to let well, me know once I get approved. Oh, okay. Kendall, shout out. <laughs> All right, maybe by the time this airs, then you'll be approved. Yeah, maybe. I'll say something when I walk past her office. <laughs> okay. Like subliminal advertising or something like that. Actually, I'm not subtle like that. I'll just say, hey, you really need to approve her to be a yoga instructor. And then just walk out. <laughs> Mic drop. Well, let me know how that works. Yeah, just I'll bring the mic. Me. I'll bring the mic and then drop the mic and be like, okay, now I gotta yeah. go back and get my just, mic. Yeah, just text me and let me know how that works out. <laughs> okay, sure. You never know. You never know. I have I've subtle ways of communicating somewhat at some degree, but yeah, that's all right. Well, that sounds fantastic, and you're doing so much not only for the community, but like I said, for your fellow coworkers, your fellow first responders, and that's really something big there too. Um, what do you have for the public? Do you have any tips and or any suggestions you want to give out? You know, uh, I will say one thing that I feel very blessed to have had in my years prior to being in this industry. Um, my dad was so gung ho on me knowing my directions, mm. and when you're 10 years old and you're getting quizzed about what direction are we going? What direction are we going? And you're like, yeah, leave me alone. But yeah. you know, you really are learning. Mm -hmm. That helped me a lot here because that's what people struggle with. Oh, gotcha. People struggle with knowing what direction they're going, what even what city they're going towards because everything is so technology based. Right. I'm just following my GPS. Oh, okay. Like, okay, well, 
what do you see around you? You know, it, right. so just knowing my directions probably helped me out tremendously. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's, that's a good point to make, too, because we do we're so relying we, we so rely on GPS on, on, yes. your, on your Google Maps or your ways or whatever you right. use to get around, which is great because they tell us traffic and they give right. us heads up and things like that. But then you get so tunnel vision to it. So if you have an emergency or you see an emergency, where are you looking? You're pulling back up the map and being like, oh, I'm, uh, you know, but you need to look around you. Right. Even just pick a business or something. Not right. so much mile markers. No. Don't, no. No mile markers. No, don't, mile, markers. no mile markers. Those are for, those are for truckers, which those we are, appreciate. But yeah. That's, those, that's not for 911. No, but it's not for 911 at all. They like landmarks. And, you yes. know, if you're passing an Outback or you're passing, right. if you're passing a Red Lobster, <laughs> right. then. You I know where to, those are in the Metroplex. Need, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Now, right. Have you eaten back there since you've worked there? Or no, you said it's been no, like since you, I, okay. I might have one time, but like relatively close to me quitting. Oh, I think probably okay. like meet up with old people. Oh, gotcha. You know, but gotcha. not since. Yeah. I, I get it. But yeah, so my, so landmarks like Lord Lobster or I don't know if that's that's not a landmark, but businesses and landmarks. I would yes. put it that way. Come on, Abby, get your stuff like, together. Like big ones that are yeah, something uh, significant, something significant that you can see. Yeah. Um, and around this area too, most like overpasses and stuff like that, right. they actually have the name of the street printed right. on it. If you're on 820 or if you're on you know whatever mm-hmm. highways all through here, 35 and stuff, you can actually look up and you can see, right? Or you know, pay attention with signs like, mm-hmm. oh, I just passed this exit, right? And or that, that helps exit. a whole lot. Yeah, it, it helps to know if it's before, um, you know, an exit because what I mean, what we know is when we're when we're asking people where they are mm-hmm. and they don't really know, they might know like, oh, I'm on 183. Like, okay, what do you pa- what do you coming up on what do you see right and then they look up and they're like oh carl is coming up yeah you know but the issue probably happened a mile back, and a half yeah. back yeah. so and it's, it's tough like, too right. it, it is tough so, because you know we all think we'd know how we'd handle an emergency right and so i i side with the public i'm always mm-hmm. like okay they're not in right. they're not in 911 yeah. so they're not going to know that they're just going to know that I need to call I need to get help right. I need to get someone here quickly mm-hmm. right. and I totally get it but tips like this of like just take a, a quick breath just kind of be like all right mm-hmm. this happened I just passed it I'm now here and I believe I saw it at you know right this exit or something something like that and it's mm-hmm. tough too because a lot of the highways around here seem like the same highway but then they change mm-hmm. to different highways like, like 121 and, and 183. 183 yeah right i know every time i mention that someone's like that's 183 i'm like whatever <laughs> you know what it's all it's right. all a mush blend to me because okay? the sign says 183 but your gps will say 121 yeah. very you know? confusing so, so sometimes your gps are great and they're great for directional so maybe when you're talking to the 911 right. dispatcher and you're telling them what's around you maybe Maybe look, oh, mm-hmm. you know what? I see on my GPS, I'm south. Right. I'm north. I'm east. Mm-hmm. I'm west. Because that can be confusing, you know, and there's nothing that's going to really tell you directionals or if your car has a Right. That's a, a huge directional bonus thing. now as yeah. a lot of cars have like on their rear view mirror on the dashboard. Yeah, have where, the direction. which way you're facing. Right. So just some tools. All the tools are there, but I totally get it can be a little intimidating to be yeah, like, absolutely. oh my gosh, they're asking me all these mm-hmm. questions. It almost feels like you're taking your SATs again. <laughs> right. But you got this. You can do this. You can you can help 911 out, you know. Uh, and I know emergencies, again, we all think we know what we're going to do. But then once it happens, you're like, oh, my gosh. And I think that's even true with people in the industry. You know, like right. when you have to call, yeah. like, you're just like, oh, gosh. Oh, man, make sure I say everything. Now, me, when I've called, I was on top of making sure <laughs> that I knew exactly where I was, <laughs> what location, everything. Because I'm like, like they're, they're going to pull this call for training oh, if I don't. <laughs> yeah. And be like, yeah, that's our pub ed person for the entire county. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's telling people to know their location, right. yet she failed. <laughs> right. No, I was good at it. I was good at it. So well, yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's really important. Um, anything else to follow that? Because that, um, that, that was a good tip. We do have, um, you know, technology that we use mm-hmm. um, that helps uh, with, with phone locations, but it's not... It's not like TV. It's not yeah. super accurate all the time. And it depends on the carrier and mm-hmm. it depends on outages and it depends on if the towers are busy or not because your phone yeah. will bounce from tower to tower. So a lot of people think that it's like TV and we just triangulate to exactly where you are and 
Sometimes yeah. it works out like that, and sometimes it doesn't. So it just it just depends. I wish it was like that. Yeah, I but, think and I'm the, sure it will be. In, yeah, in the future one years. Day. Yeah, one day it'll right. get there, and you know it's always important to say like you know the there. You know, if you're calling from a landline, yeah, exact location. Right. We love landlines. There's a few of them, but they're still out there and they're wonderful. But cell phones, they'll give not the exact like address, but they'll give a general location. But again, there could be, you know, uh, you know, other situations that arise that are like, there's a cell phone tower out, or that one's busy, or there are AT and T's like, oh, I'm sorry, we're having issues, and right. so then you get, pick up on someone else's, uh, like you know, tower. you pick up on yeah. Verizon or something like that. Because even if like a service provider's down, you can still call nine one one because it'll right. just patch on to the other right. service providers who are up. That's the nice thing about emergency services. So that's also a good point to to bring to to the table. Also, so a lot of good education here. There we go. Nice I pub. Tried. Nice pub what, tag what else on there. You want, you want me to talk about? I think I. I you you know what? I feel so educated now. So when I drive back to the district office, I'm going to make sure that I'm always aware of my surroundings. And your directions. And yeah, I mean, I don't use GPS anymore because I drive all the time. Right. And I know pretty much everything like the back of my hand now. But now we, now when they throw a wrench in there and there's construction or something's closed down, I'm like, oh, gosh, it, it's like off-roading now. I got to get off the highway and off-road it. <laughs> What's the adventure begins. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, Sally. Let's go. Right. So I really appreciate your time, Michelle. You, I, you're you such a great inspiration to those who are in 911 who are wanting to grow their career and maybe do some more extracurricular activities. And that's what a great way of doing that to to help the, the mental health and the physical health of your fellow first responders. Absolutely. So I appreciate your time. and. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Well, you too. Thank you. And to everyone that's listening, thanks again for your support and thank you for listening. You can catch a new episode of TC911 Beyond the Call every Monday. And next week, yet again, we'll hear from another leader in 911 in our Tarrant County 911 district area. And until then, have a fabulous week. (laughs) 